sure how it works. Oh, okay. I gotta talk to the chief deputy chief. You know, he, uh, when we go to one of these programs, He was able to go in there and assign to me what he wanted me to teach these guys. Uh, which is nice. Now, what I was thinking though. I gotta talk to him to find out if there's a way that I can assign. Because then, you know, or is it, you know, privy to only certain people? You know, I mean, I don't know. Because if I can assign, I can assign a lot of drills to the guys that can do them at home. And then when we go to the meeting, uh, I can ask a few questions to make sure that they did, in fact, do it. Uh, and nobody else did. Or, or at least no. Oh, this is, I didn't even realize. I got a little push on it. What's that about? Oh, I guess that would be if I wanted to strap it on my back. Yeah, this could be used as a back strap, too. Oh. This one got a hook on it? No, it doesn't. Oh, it does, but it's on that end. Okay, so what is that for? I don't know. Uh, so anyhow, it'll make it a lot easier for me because I can s assign other videos to them as well. Let's go back over here. Actually, I'm going to have to take you here. I'll take you here. I think you're seeing enough. Now i got to get... Need something to put there. Booga booga. Actually, let me do this because I don't want to get overspray. Thank you. 
I don't have to worry about these being different because they're both the same. Otherwise, I would make the Velcro different so that they would only fit in. So now, on this side, I'm going to put the opposite, and then I'll do the opposite on the other one. See, these really aren't going to come in and out, but I want to have that option to move it if I want to. It's not too cold, but it's chilly enough to make it damp and miserable, if you know what I mean. Okay, so we have the furry on this side, we have the rough on this side, and when I put it, the other sides in there uh they're going to be the opposite so naturally but for now i'm just going to let these sit i don't want to just brush anything and have it start spreading around and making a mess in there and let me clean this there we go and for now until i know exactly where the other ones are going and I have these two here, and those two are going to be the opposites that go inside the bag. This, for now, I really don't need it, I'll throw it away. Take the other here, take these with me. Because otherwise, I'll forget them. And I'll say, where did I leave them? They're not where they're supposed to be. And then I'll be asking you guys. And by that time, I've already found them. I should do this with the 360 camera next time. I'm going to be walking around back and forth. Why not? Okay. Alright, so, what do I have here? I have... Paper clips and spare batteries. I also have, there it is, there it is. I want to see what's on this thumb drive. And I also have two. I have two? No, one should be an adapter. SD cards. If I can get to it, that is. No, it's not an adapter. I got two SD cards in here. And no adapter? <sighs> no, I'm just going to put one in here. I'm going to put a paper clip under it, though. So it'll be easier for me to get it out next time. And then I'm going to get an adapter. have a couple of them, if 
Man, I got them all inside the house. Here we go. Now this thumb drive, I want to check to see what's on it. Uh, you know, at one time, let me show you again. I think I may have told you once already. I went out. Uh, well, the squad paid for them, but I bought eight of these, these Gorilla ones. All right, they're nice, they're solid. All right, they got the cap on them. You know, they're durable. So I bought eight. Well, actually, I bought 16, but I paid for eight of them. The squad paid for eight. But the deal was, I was going to put in a year's supply of drills, videos with written tests. sell my store my uh, my um, print shop I mean, that's, that's not familiar uh, so anyway I would load these up with any forms that you may need the programs that you may need to open the form or open the video uh, links to these places if there was not enough room uh, the videos one per month with a written 10 to 15 question test. Um, so basically everything you needed. And then if there was any changes, you were to bring this with you. If there was any changes, I would make them on mine, take yours back, give you a new one, format it, and I can start over. Or I would even tell you sometimes, bring in your thumb drive. Roger, and if there's anything on that thumb drive that you need, put it into a file on your computer. So put a file in your computer, you know, fire department thumb drive. I don't care. Name it whatever you want that you'll be familiar with. Drag everything in and drop it there because this is all categorized so once you put it into your folder it'll be all categorized within your folder well next thing you know they're losing them and they're going to the store and they're buying a new one well, when they go to the store to buy the new one they don't want to spend the money for this one so they buy shit like this well you know what I am giving you one of these that belong to me I don't want this one back. You follow me? If I bought eight of these personally, these are my personal ones that I'm using to make it easy for you guys. If you lose it, you better buy another one of these. Well, they're buying these. After that, so you want no more. No more. I got two for my kids. That's the way it's going to be. And a lot of them were claiming that they lost them because they wanted to keep it for themselves. And then they go buy a five hour one to, to hand in. Well, yeah, I'm not stupid. I wasn't born yesterday. Now, most of the guys I have in there right now, I am happy with, I'm satisfied with. Uh, there's a couple of them that are going to need a little bit more attention than others. Uh, there's a couple that just like to do a lot of talking and not a lot of listening. Uh, but, you know, they, you get used to working with these guys, and they get used to working with us. You know, we have to get used to working with one another. Neither one of us are perfect, you know? So, uh, so for the most part, I trust them all. Now, with that being said, 
I have a sheet that I made up because they never had this. For 20 years, they never had an inventory sheet as to who has what and have them sign for it. They get a copy, you get a copy. They're losing equipment like crazy. And on the back, I, they have to sign it again. It's an agreement. Now, I'm going to paraphrase it instead of reading it all to you. This is something I wrote up last year. Everybody Everybody that gets a piece of equipment, regardless of what it is, is going to have to sign that. Going to have to sign that. And it goes down what you have if it isn't already typed in. Well, I've seen it happen in the past with other things. For instance, when I was working uh, and running a transition period of um, security with the University of Bridgeport, I was hired to go in there as a, uh, a six-month transition uh, system. And what that basically means is they were working and they had in-house security meaning the payroll for the security was on the college's books. College had to pay for the medical, college had to pay everything, uh, and it was union, they went union. So now they have a union involved. Well, eventually this started costing the college it's your level, yeah. Because the demands start getting more and more and more. And they were doing quite well, actually, on what they were doing. Plus, there was things getting stolen by the security. They were stealing computers. I may have told you that story. So I go in there as an employee to work with this in-house security team. So basically, they go to the to the in-house security team, and they say um, to the supervisor there, "Oh, by the way, uh, we felt necessary maybe to bring an extra guy in for you. So uh, we hired this guy, and you know he'll be coming in today, and you know uh, show him around, you know, and, and treat him like you treat anybody else. All right. So they bring me in, and I'm the new guy, as far as you're concerned." meaning you being the in-house security, you're working for the college. Well, what I'm there to do, basically, is over six months, weasel into the good side of everybody and find out what's going on and how everything is operating. And then I start making changes, not for them to do, because I'm not supposed to be doing that, I'm just a worker. But I go home, I write it all out, I put it in computers, and I start writing all new post orders. So every post had a set of post orders, which they didn't have them. Uh, this here way, if you hired somebody, they come in, they sit at the post, the desk, they open it up. Okay, this is what is entailed here. This is what I have to do and the steps I have to do it within. You know, and if I have to do it every hour, I have to do it every hour. And I don't want it to be the same every hour. You know, this hour I may do one, two, three, four. Next hour I may be, you know, three, two, four, one. You know, that type of thing. You don't want to build up a routine. Uh, so anyway, I would set all this up at home. Then, after the six months is up, and I've learned everything that I needed to learn from these guys, including what they're taking and who's taking them. Uh, I would go and I see the dean. We sit down and we talk about it. And then they would bring in a contract security company. And back then it was Burns. Uh, they were a pretty big company. They had uh, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, uh, Massachusetts, I think it was. 
they're a pretty good, pretty good sized company. But uh, they bring in burns. Well, then what I would do is now I would work with their guys, and they know who I am now. All right, uh, the ones that were there didn't know, but the ones that stayed found out real quick because some of them did stay. A lot of them left. The ones that left, that's where I'm going with it. So meanwhile, I'm teaching and showing the Burns guys, the post orders, how things are gonna, should be done, how the college would like them to be done. If you have to modify them, make sure you make any modifications before you put them into action. You bring him to the dean so he can say yay or nay. Uh, you know, so the, the dean's in charge. I'm not going to be there anymore. Uh, I am going to be going out and doing what I got to do. Even though they wanted me to stay, the transition money was great. The money they want to pay for security, not good. So, but meanwhile, the ones that were leaving. Once the scuttlebutt came out, because it happens fast, somewhere along the line, uh, somebody, and I think it was in maintenance, mentioned to one of the guys that uh, on in-house security that the company or the college was looking at contract security. So once that scuttlebutt starts getting around everybody starts coming to their own conclusions. Well, a lot of them at this point, you know, started taking whatever they can take, you know, computers or whatever, and leaving. Well, they would also start taking parts of the security equipment and uniforms. And that's what started this conversation about that sheet. Because... These are guys that's been there a long time, but once they think that the college is screwing them, or and they may get rid of them, well, they may get rid of them is basically all on them. It's uh, not the college looking like to get rid of them. They're getting rid of you because you're a, you're a nuisance or a thief. But um, they would take uh, those long coats, you know, you see the, the, the long raincoats, they're orange on the uh, one side, black on the other, they're reversible, some are bright green, but up there they would use the orange and black, um, you know, when they're doing security patrol, and they were all in the locker room, so anybody can go in and just grab one if they need it. Well, the next thing you know, that locker room started getting empty. Well, nobody knowing who has what, because of the way they ran it, they lost, I forgot what the number was. It wasn't hundreds of thousands, but it was a couple of thousand dollars in uniforms. Uh, and then the guys that did have issues, oh, where's your uniform? Where's your flashlight? Oh, the flashlight got broke. Oh, all right. Oh, I lost the flashlight on patrol one night. Oh, all right. So there's always an excuse. But meanwhile, it's sitting in their house because they don't want to give it up. So with that, it says, well, that one call is an awful pain in the ass. And they don't want to chatter on the radio. So what that says is, you are responsible for your equipment. The equipment that we issued you belongs to the town, or the squad at this point. Uh, so... If it gets ruined, you bring it to us. We will replace it. If it gets lost, you're responsible for it. Because what they say is, oh, I lost it, or it got lost, or somebody must have taken it, or I lost it while on patrol. Oh, well, it got ruined, so I threw it out. If you have nobody to answer to, you can say anything you want. Meanwhile, you have it in, in your house or in hand. Um, so with that, if you know you're going to be responsible for it, your chances of taking it are less. You know? And people that are even good guys, 
if they feel they're getting shafted somewhere, they become bad guys. You know, I mean, it's just the nature of the beast. You know, sometimes you have to actually fight that, you know? Uh, you don't know how many times I've had to say, ah, you motherfucker, you know, but you, you just have to sit back because you know that it's, 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 it's the nature of the beast and I'm not going to let that bring it out on me. So, I'm where I am because of what I do and how I do it and that I, I feel that I can be trusted. So I'm not going to start bullshitting just to, to take something to get back at somebody. Or to take it because I want it. But, uh, so basically that's what it is. If, if you destroy something in some way, shape, or whatever, shape, or whatever, bring us to pieces. There's always something there to identify it to us. You bring me a broken hat, you bring me a piece of the broken hat. I can tell if it's our hat or not. I really can. And then at that point, I will give you a new hat. And we will put it on that sheet. Uh, you know, uh, uh, destroyed hat or, or whatever, you know, damaged hat, you know, new hat issue, end of day, you know, that type of thing. And the same with the coats. Because right, just, just the last month and a half, we bought eight new coats and then have to have them lettered. Uh, and these are winter uh, well, they're actually like a three season, but there's no zip out liners on them. Uh, they're more of a winter coat. Uh, they're nice coats. When they, when I uh, get them this week or next week, I'll show it to you. You know, but new coats, winter hats, summer hats, winter gloves, summer gloves, raincoat, uh, vest. You know, I mean, the vest is thirty dollars. Is it a big deal? No, but we gotta spend and get twelve of them. And then you have to have them printed. You know, they start adding up. The coats. I just thought they're 140 a piece plus printing, you know, which I don't know what the printing actually costs on them. Uh, you know, I mean, these things start adding up. And if they say, oh, I, you know, that damn coat, you know, it, it got all destroyed, ripped up, and I, I threw it away. You know, what did you throw it away for? Well, I didn't know what to do with it. Well, now you do, because on that sheet it tells you what to do with it. And you signed the sheet, so you read it. You have a copy of it. So, anyway, I didn't mean to go rattling off on something. But, I do. I do. And that's what was going on with these uh, thumb drives. Oh, I lost it. But I got another one here. Yeah, but I don't want the other one. I don't want your $4 one or $3 one or $5 one. You know, I want the $15 one that I gave you. <coughs> I gave it to you for a reason. And there's no reason why you should know why I gave it to you. You just do what I asked you to do. I don't have to explain it to you unless I want to. And it's something that it really doesn't need an explanation. If it's part of the equipment, you should take care of it. I hate getting involved and in, in starting into this because it gets me rolling and it starts me thinking about all the shit that, I, that I've done in the past and things. And, uh, whatever. whatever. Now this is what I have no idea what this is. What's he barking at? <sighs> now, this may go, maybe not. Yes, it goes to the speaker. All right. So that goes to the speaker which means there's a charger running around here someplace for it. So, we have to find that. 
guys along, believe it or not you may not think so but I see it you know the other day last night when we were handing out the radios and Randy was you know captain uh, was giving the guys a brief uh, rundown. He said the same thing that somebody else said. And you take out the whiner? Oh, isn't it that nice? Oh, okay. Uh, we run out of stock channels a lot. Stock channels are not supposed to, as a rule, go through the 911. They're only good for a few thousand feet, depending again on the terrain. So they're just, you know, basic, you know, uh, uh, operations within a certain area. You know, whatever the operations may be, you know, traffic, fire, hoses, whatever. Uh, you know, within that range. Usually a, an average city block, you know, you're pretty good at, you know, where you can see them maybe, but, you know, that type of thing. Well, anyway, last, last year, the year before, now Rob, who was with the Coast Guard, was here the other day, and he, I think, is also with Company 5. However, um, we were doing a radio drill one day, the squad, with, oh, it's in the house, with the, with the fire department handheld. The Motorola's T25, um, and they have operations, dispatch, stock 2-4, stock 3-5, you know, so we were using 2-4, and we had one person at one location, and he had one, two, three, four guys with him. So he's not standing there alone. And he has one radio. Myself and Ray took the other radios from the other guys that were there. And we took them and we drove, well, half a mile away as the crow flies. And we took each radio and we called this other guy, this other member, on the other side. Now he has one radio. So we would call him, all right, that we're doing a radio check, and we are using whatever person's radio it was, which goes by a number. When you key the mic, it automatically transmits that number to dispatch. So anyhow, um, and then he would respond back. So we know that that radio to that radio is talking at least a half a mile away. We turn that one off, put it aside, we pick up the next radio, check it, stop two to four, so-and-so, so-and-so. Copy, so-and-so. 